whispering shadows. The vast forest loomed before me, an endless sea of verdant mystery as I embarked on a solitary camping journey into the untamed wilderness. The tranquility of nature with its gentle breezes whispering through the pines and the soft rustle of hidden creatures promised an escape from the chaos of daily life. The first day unfolded in serene isolation, offering peaceful solitude amidst the ancient trees. But as nightfall draped its dark veil across the woods, an unsettling silence enveloped my campsite. Nature's symphony conspicuously muted. In the deathly quiet, a distant, discordant melody of animalistic cries echoed through the forest, sending shivers cascading down my spine. I clutched my flashlight, its trembling beam a futile shield against the encroaching darkness. Then just beyond the perimeter of my camp, I saw it, a figure half concealed in the shadows, its form an unnatural amalgamation of man and beast, eyes ablaze with a malevolent golden glow. Its skin seemed to hang loosely upon its frame as though wearing a grotesque, ill-fitting mask. A putrid scent of decay wafted through the crisp air as it began to move closer. Its movements an eerie, disjointed dance between human and animal. Paralyzed with terror, I could only watch as the creature, a foul being from countless campfire tales, edged closer its form flickering between a gaunt man and a predatory beast. The whispers began, a cacophony of voices, each one a twisted mimicry of people I had once known, blending into a chilling symphony that clawed at my sanity. My legs, finally springing into action, propelled me through the darkened woods, the creature's hellish serenade pursuing me through the twisted trees. Each step was a gamble in the shadowy wilderness, branches reaching out like skeletal fingers attempting to halt my desperate flight. Inexplicably, I found myself at a cliff's edge, the land plummeting away into an abyssal darkness below. The whispers crescendoed into a maddening roar as the skinwalker emerged from the darkness, its form now a horrifying mosaic of familiar faces and feral savagery. I was left with an impossible choice, face the abomination before me or leap into the unknown void below. But even in that terror stricken moment, a sliver of defiant resolve sparked within me. I would not be claimed by the darkness with a breath that tasted of fear and defiance, I stepped back into the void, embracing the uncertain abyss over the certain horror that loomed above. My descent into the inky blackness seemed both an eternity and a fleeting moment before icy waters enveloped me, swallowing my screams. When I emerged, gasping under the moonlit sky, the distant cliffs loomed as silent sentinels above, placid, indifferent lake. The whispers were gone, replaced by the gentle lap of waters against the rocky shore. The skinwalker, it seemed, was bound to its shadowy domain, and I had escaped its malevolent grasp. But the echoes of those twisted, haunting whispers lingered, woven into the tapestry of my soul a chilling reminder of the darkness that dwells unseen amidst the wilderness. Shivering both from the frigid waters and the remnants of terror, I began to swim towards the distant shore, a desperate, weary stroke towards the sanctuary of the known and the light. But behind me in the depths of the dark waters and the jagged shadows of the cliffs above, I knew the whispers would forever linger, awaiting my return to the wilderness.
the unseen guests. The excitement buzzed through my veins as my friend S and I loaded up the car with a hodgepodge of ghost hunting tools, a K2 meter, spirit box, flashlights, cameras, and a sprinkle of daring enthusiasm. It was a few whispers away from Halloween, and what better way to dabble in the spectral side of the season than to spend a night in a reputedly haunted house. With hearts light and spirits high, we sped off into the dimming twilight, the horizon swallowing the sun and regurgitating a cascade of vibrant, ominous colors. We wished to arrive with enough time to set up our equipment, aiming to capture any ephemeral wisps of the supernatural that might flit through the ancient, abandoned abode. The house loomed before us, its silhouetted jagged black against the encroaching night, windows like hollow eyes, staring into the abyss of forgotten times. Our footsteps creaked ominously upon the time-worn wooden planks as we entered, each echo a whisper from the past beckoning us deeper into the spectral cocoon. Setting up our equipment amidst the dust-laden air and bales of cobweb, we navigated through the gloom, every creak and groan of the house amplifying the pulsating anticipation that fluttered within our chests. The K2 meter, perched delicately upon an ancient, worn table, flickered sporadically, each subtle illumination a tantalizing hint at unseen presences. It was the spirit box, however, that shattered our light-hearted adventure into something inexplicably profound and unsettling. Amidst the crackles and whirs of static, a voice, frail, yet resolute, seeped through, whispering tales of times long past, of sorrow interwoven with the very fibers of the decaying walls around us. As we delved deeper into the dialogue with the unseen, a chilling tapestry of narratives unfolded each spectral recounting tales of lives once lived, of loss, joy, love, tragedy. The air grew denser, palpably saturated with the emotions of the unseen entities that surrounded us. The atmosphere humming with an eerie, spectral energy that defied logical comprehension. Our cameras, once aimed with playful daring into the spectral abyss, now captured inexplicable phenomena. Orbs of light dancing in miller-colored patterns through the decay. Shadowy figures flitting through the peripheries of frames. And ethereal whispers imprinted upon our recordings. What began as a playful foray into spectral adventures had morphed into an communion with the histories and emotions entwined with the ancient dwelling. And as dawn's light gingerly caressed the horizon, banishing the entities back into the unseen, S and I exited the house, forever imprinted by the echoes of the lives and stories that permeated its decaying walls. We left with more than just electronic recordings and spectral images. We carried with us a profound understanding of the unseen layers that linger beneath the surface of our physical world. The emotions and narratives of the past that reverberate silently, yet palpably, through the veil that separates the tangible from the spectral. And so, the haunting was not a fear but of a melancholic acknowledgement, a spectral whisper that lingered, a reminder of the histories, stories, and emotions that dwell, unseen, yet ever-present, amidst the realms of the living and the departed.
echoes in the pines. Beneath the expansive canvas of the star-studded sky, I trudge through the dense evergreen forests, the crisp air carrying whispered legends of creatures that dwelt within its shadowy depths. The alluring tales of Bigfoot, which had long permeated the local folklore, had drawn me into the wilderness, armed with curiosity and a faint tremor of apprehension. With every crunch of the underbrush beneath my boots, I could sense the solitude enveloping me, the isolation punctuated only by the distant hoots of an owl and the subtle rustlings of nocturnal life hidden amidst the foliage. My torchlight cast eerie shadows upon the trunks of towering pines as I ventured deeper, the darkness seemingly swallowing the beam with an insatiable appetite. It was within the abyss that a peculiar sound reverberated, a low, guttural growl resonating through the tranquil forest and igniting a spark of primal fear within my being. My heart pounded, reverberating through the stillness as I strained my eyes, peering into the impenetrable dark, half expecting to see the mythical creature emerge from the void. Yet, nothing. Silence once more draped itself over the trees, the growl a mere echo in the expensive woodland theater. I pondered, could it have been my imagination? A manifestation of the latent fear and excitement that thrummed through my veins. Then a silhouette, immense and vaguely humanoid, briefly flickered at the periphery of my torchlight, dissipating as swiftly as it had materialized. I froze. The stories of colossal, fur-covered beings that had permeated my childhood surfacing in the catacombs of my mind. A moment of stillness lingered, an eternity encapsulated amidst the pines, before I hesitantly proceeded, drawn by an explicable compulsion towards the unknown. The sound of my solitary footsteps were companioned by faint yet perceptible rustlings and enigmatic presence that lurked just beyond the veil of visibility. As I delved further, I discovered footprints, colossal and eerily humanoid, and printed upon the soft earth. A shiver coursed through me, teetering upon the precipice beyond belief and skepticism, wonder and dread. Was this tangible evidence of the fabled creature that had long dwelled within the whispered tales of the region? or merely the product of an overactive imagination fueled by the eerie solitude of the forest. My journey through the woodland abyss became a dance with the enigmatic, every shadow a potential entity, every sound a whispered communication from the unseen. The footprints led me through a labyrinth journey beneath the celestial dome, the destination as elusive as the creature itself. Eventually the first light of dawn caressed the horizon, the shadows recreated before its gentle glow. The forest, once an ominous abyss, now bathed in a soft, reassuring light, the footprints gradually fading amidst the underbrush. I emerged, forever altered, teetering upon the fragile boundary between the known and the unknown, belief and skepticism. The experience imprinted upon my soul lingered as a haunting melody, an eternal question that echoed through the corridors of my being. Was it Bigfoot or just my imagination? The Guardians of Shadows My regular daylight hours and security always passed uneventfully. A routine dance between monitors and occasional patrols. But that one night, when I was asked to cover a graveyard shift, 
Everything I thought I knew about my work environment was cast into an eerie abyss. The nocturnal silence enveloped the facility, a tranquil yet oddly oppressive solitude that pervaded the empty lots and vacant corridors. Armed only with a flashlight, pen, and my patrol documentation, I ventured into the warm embrace of the dark night, the subtle hum of distant city life, a faint melody in the background. The first few patrols passed without incident. Every checked gate and secure door, a tick on the sheet, a step closer to the sanctuary of dawn. But as I rounded the corner of the dimly lit building, a faint, guttural growl permeated through the still air, a sinister whisper amidst the silence. I paused, the rational tendrils of my mind grappling with the impossibility of the situation. This was not the wilderness. No wild animal should be prowling the urban night. Perhaps a stray dog, I mused, or the distant mumble of a late night wanderers in the nearby park. Yet as I continued, attempting to cloak myself in the comforting blanket of rational, another growl, deeper, more primal, pierced the night, its resonance accompanied by the heavy, deliberate cadence of footsteps an ominous symphony amidst the tranquility. My pause quickened, the once familiar environment, now a treacherous maze, every shadow a potential cloak for the unseen entity that lingered just beyond perception. I hastened my pace, the soft glow of the security office a distant beacon amidst the abyss. Glancing over my shoulder, my torchlight briefly illuminated an entity an embodiment of the inexplicable and the grotesque. It's towering from cloaked and matted fur, its head a grotesque parody of a deer, with sharp teeth protruding from the sinister grin and malevolent yellow eyes that seemed to pierce into the very fabric of my being. Frozen momentarily in a paralyzing cocktail of fear and fascination, I gazed upon the creature its form barely separated from me by the fragile barrier of the fence. Its eyes, ablaze with an enigmatic intensity, locked onto mine, an unspoken dialogue traversing the chasm between us. With a trembling hand, I managed to retreat, the entity remaining motionless, its gaze a lingering presence as I stumbled back towards the sanctuary of light and familiarity. Ensconced within the confines of the security office, I ponder the enigmatic encounter, the creature an unsolved mystery that dwells within the shadows of the known. The remaining hours until dawn passed in an anxious vigil, the creature's presence a haunting undercurrent amidst the mundane. As the first rays of sunlight pierced the horizon, banishing the shadows and the entities that dwelled within them, I exited the office. The world around me, now tinged with an eerie unreality, the boundaries between the known and the unknown forever blurred. My daylight hours, once a sanctuary of normality, were now haunted by the nocturnal encounter. A creature, a spectral guardian that dwelled within the shadows. An eternal reminder of the mysteries and enigmas that linger, unseen, amidst the familiar. Don't walk in the back, whatever you do. The Appalachian Mountains had always been a sanctuary for our tight-knit group of friends. Each time we ventured into its embrace, we were greeted with new trails, sights, and the promise of memories that would last a lifetime. This trip, though, was to be unlike any other. As the sun arched its golden descent over the horizon, we set up our sprawling encampment, a community of six tents, pitched side by side like sentinel guarding us against the unpredictable embrace of nature. Excitement bubbled among us, as we anticipated the evening's hike, eager to embrace the wilderness once more. 
The forest of the Appalachians are always teeming with life. But that evening, as our boots crunched over fallen leaves and our laughter echoed amongst the trees, an unfamiliar hush seemed to blanket the woods. It was during a brief respite, as we all paused to quench our thirst and catch our breath, that the atmosphere shifted. Unsettling soft footsteps danced at the periphery of our hearing, making me exchange uneasy glances with one of the group members. Jade, rationalizing it as a curious animal, we tried to push the eerie feeling away and carry on. As night began its takeover and we regrouped at camp, the ambience was electrifying with stories of the day and the delicious scent of campfire food. But the transient peace was shattered by a scream. A sound so unnatural, so devoid of humanity, that it sent chills racing down our spines. It echoed around the mountains, a chilling reminder that we were not alone. The campfire's glow became our sanctuary and every rustle and twig snap amplified our anxieties. Lucas, always the brave one, suggested forming a search team to investigate. Equipped with flashlights, he and a couple of others ventured out, leaving the rest of us anxiously waiting. Hours seemed to stretch infinitely, and then the radios crackled to life. Don't walk in the back, whatever you do, Lucas's voice whispered, an undertone of raw terror unmistakable, but the transmission was cut off abruptly, replaced by the same unholy scream we'd heard earlier. The remaining members of our group huddled together, frozen in fear. Each second felt like an eternity until dawn began to illuminate the outlines of our campsite. With the first rays of sun, we decided to pack up and leave this cursed place. As we dismantled the camp, a discovery turned our blood as ice. In the back of the camp, right beside the last tent, were dozens of strange, inhumane footprints circling our campsite, as if something or someone had been watching us all night. We never returned to that part of the Appalachians, and over time, we tried to push the traumatic experience out of our minds but the chilling warning remained etched in our memories. Don't walk in the back, whatever you do. Every whisper of the wind, every rustle of the leaves serves as a haunting reminder that the mountains hold secrets, some of which are best left undiscovered. <laughs>